I want to leave a mark, a quarter inch rabbit in, as well as a quarter inch down. Now there's a couple ways you can cut this, as you probably know, but I'm going to cut it one on the table saw and I'm going to cut one by hand to show you that. Now I've got my data on my, on my blade set it a quarter inch high my fence a quarter inch from the inside tooth so I'm going to mark uh, run a pass over here like this I turn it over run a pass like that and we'll cut the, data, we'll cut the uh, rabbit See, it makes a nice, good, clean rabbit. Let me show you a second way. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to put a line again with my gauge, still set to where it was at earlier. I was drawing me a line. This is going to help any tear that might happen. And I put in a mark coming down right here, and also went in and put a mark right there as well so I know my quarter inch rabbit starts with. Now <clears throat> you set my I set my fence to where the other one was up against the fence here. And I can just start real making light real light passes. Begin with not too aggressive. Get the plane to the work. You can make your rabbits just like you would on table saw. A little slower, but 
but I think somehow it's a little more, a little more fun to do it this way. But as long as the only limit to the horsepower of this bad boy is the muscles yourself. So you just keep going to get this plane down. Just grab it down. This is Hackberry. A rather plentiful tree around here, but not as widely used anymore as it used to be, but it's a really nice, um, really nice wood. And what I'll do is I'll get this one down to about where I want it, see? And then I will, and on this plane, there's a little tooth right here that's used that puts a curve in it first right here, and I'll show you that in just a moment. But this tooth here rides along and it keeps everything, it makes a little cut for you. I wouldn't have had to use this piece over here, but it makes a cut for you, so you don't have to do that part right there. I'll show you this piece. So this little curve, I forget what you call this, but I did know the name, but this little curve right here sits down inside, a little piece right here. It's a little, wheel you can turn it so it nothing cuts right here or you turn it down to where it just protrudes below the surface and that cuts a path just before the blade does and you just tighten this back up and you can start your in there looks like that and as you're cutting all the surface this piece here makes you a nice crisp edge and then this knife Iron right here cuts the uh, rabbit. Like this, the first cut, so I line it right here. Now I've got my stop block set at where I want the frame to be. Make sure you have it flat and against your, your stop. And I'll make the next cut. Now at some point, I'm going to put glue to all these, and I'll bring them forth here, <clears throat> and wrap them all around here, and glue them up to a beautiful frame. Because I don't like to have a ton of glue as we're putting this together right now, I'm going to put a, a coat of glue on the end grain, because the end grain soaks up a lot of glue. I'll put a lot of glue on the end grain here, or a little bit of glue on the end grain here, rather, and I'll let that soak in and sort of dry a little bit before I come back and glue them up. Now I'm going to bring them all together. Tape may come off here. 
I live here <clears throat> on my paper that I have. <clears throat> Down here, well, that went really good. Cut! I'll do the traditional way I always do it, which is, I think, the better of the two. Some folks don't have don't have a problem leaving the glue on until later. I like to wipe it off now. It seems to be a little bit. Maybe some have to get off, but not near as much. Now, and let's check some stuff here. All right, we're in good shape. So I've cut this um, spline joint I'm gonna put in this frame now, <clears throat> but you want to make sure the knife wall right here are actually right there that you can see right across here is exactly where you want it or you, when you put your spline in, it's not gonna look uh, parallel to the other surface. So <clears throat> we need to clean this up a little bit just enough to get any kind of imperfections out of there that might still be in there and we'll go right up against to the you want to register your chisel like on this wall here, this square, and then just go down through there and then you can see clearly how to make your way down through there. See they're right in that crevice, right in that valley right there. You want to get just the right amount off of that, clean that right there up. So we'll do that to all four corners and then we'll make our splines. What I want to do is I'm going to put a chamfer on the back of the frame here. So we're going to see how that looks. I'm going to take just very light passes. You just see it start to... You want to make sure your plane is good and sharp. aggressive here it's 
So you can see I have a nice, <clears throat> nice chamfer across there. Adds a little bit of detail to your work. So you can take it to this other end here. You can see why I have the sliding dead man now. You come in here again, adding a slight. Come back here. Just kind of clean things up a little bit. They have to match. Real tab is something like this right here. Look down just to make sure everything matches up real good. So a little bit of detail gives you that. I don't know if you can see that or not, but whoops. A little bit of chamfer right there. Anyway, that little, uh, give it a kind of a standoff from the wall, just a hair bit of a shadow, maybe an eighth inch or so shadow behind the frame. You can go a lot more dramatic than that, you can a quarter inch or maybe even three eighths, but a little, you can come all the way up to the edge if you want. But anyway, that's how you do that.